All right, welcome uh, to, to our webinar today. Uh, it's great to see everybody. As far as who we are, uh, this is Vertical Communications. Uh, we are a comprehensive communications provider and uh, customer experience expert. We have decades of experience delivering solutions um, that are tailored to the business needs and to the desired outcomes of our customers. So we act not just as your vendor, we're your strategic partner. We help you uh, make sure that your solutions meet your needs and make sure that they deliver great customer experiences and that also that you get your return on your investment. So our focus is customer experience and, and product experience. We wanna make sure we can blend those so that you guys can reach your uh, outcomes and that uh, you can have the best uh, communications solution that works for your company. A tailored, um, individualized approach, not just a cookie cutter one. So with that, I'm going to introduce our speaker today, Craig Duranda. He's a senior, he's our senior vice president of customer experience. And um, he's going to share how organizations can provide a customer experience, no matter who they are in the organization, and how um, this, this strategy uh, works and how you can use it to deliver a heightened customer experience and deliver a better and return, get a better return on your investment. So Craig, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Jeff. And hi, hi everybody. Thanks for joining today. We'll keep this pretty loose and informal, and we're going to keep it a bit high level. The, the object of what we're presenting today is to change your perspective a bit, uh, expand your perspective. And, um, to engage with us to have deeper conversations about these topics. So everything we were going to talk about today is centered around customer experience. And migrating your customer experience tools to the cloud, we think is a big advantage for you because it'll provide the capabilities uh, that you need to deliver these cu exceptional customer experiences. That's the, the CX portion of it. There, there's also a PX portion, a uh, product experience, and that's where we also have a tremendous amount of uh, know-how uh, at Vertical uh, and on our staff. Uh, combining the two, the, the customer experience and the product experience, that's what allows you to really design, implement, measure, and evolve your customer experiences that you want to deliver. So we'd like you to consider uh, today uh, uh, how you would expand your perspectives on the definition of who customer experience agents are and what they do. So we'll dive in for a few slides. I, I always start with a slide like this is why is this important? And starting with why is something that I really emphasize with all of the interactions that I have, right? So the market's evolving, the solutions that you can uh, uh, subscribe to are evolving. Uh, the products within those solutions are evolving. Your needs are evolving. And for today, we're going to focus a lot on the, the people uh, and the people inside your organization and how they're evolving and how their roles and responsibilities are evolving. And of course, your competition is always evolving and your needs as a business are evolving. So let's, let's dive into it. So I like to, to say that all of your people have the ability and the potential to impact the customer experiences you provide. Also, they make a big impact in CSAT and your customers' ratings of, of uh, your company and your people and brand loyalty. But also your ESAT, your employer, employee, I'm sorry, satisfaction. So they're all, they're all intertwined. And I highlighted people here but I also want to say all of your people and your CX tools have the ability and potential to impact that CX, CSAT, and brand loyalty. So it's a combination of the two that can make a, a tremendous difference for you in the marketplace and with your customers. So the traditional customer agent, uh, CX uh, agent role uh, responsibilities, and then technology advances that have occurred, they, they lay out something like this, right? Uh, traditionally, you interacted with customers, and it was voice, and then we had a chat and email, but most everybody was in a formal contact center or a call center. And the management of those interactions were very focused on the company's key performance indicator metrics, the KPIs. And 
the balance of those KPIs really can go a couple of different directions, but we see the balance is either being more time centric. You know, what's your, your time in queue? What's the average talk time or handle time of an interaction? Or they can be customer experience centric, right? What's your CSAT rating or your net promoter score or any of the other metrics to measure uh, customer uh, satisfaction and customer loyalty. And then the other area that we see traditionally has been the mindset of resolve or deflect. Uh, the agent has limited authority to resolve uh, uh, issues or conflict. And that's very important to, uh, you know, to think about as, as your perspectives grow and change is how do these things that are traditional agent roles, how do you grow and change, evolve them? And then technology. Technology advances have occurred over the past 20 years in contact center that have been pretty remarkable. And I think in the past year, we've seen a, a very big acceleration toward AI-based tools. But choice is what the technology is delivering. Omni-channel capabilities. Customers um, are now getting used to the fact that they can communicate or interact with you in a, in a number of ways any time they want and anywhere they're at. And by the way, anywhere your agents are at. And personalization. This has become another big factor in making that customer experience much more enjoyable, much more effective to drive the measurements you want in customer experience ratings. And to do that, you have to leverage the massive amount of data most companies have and leverage that data to understand customer needs and expectations. And then outcomes, you know, designing with customer experience in mind and considering that you now have this ability to personalize the customer experience, consider OptiChannel. We talk about OmniChannel and OmniChannel has been around now for a while, but OptiChannel and my definition of that is a very simple definition, providing the optimum inter interaction experience for the customer that's personalized. Omnichannel just says, I have all of this functionality. OptiChannel says, I know I have the functionality and here's how I'm going to design the customer experiences to deliver a great customer experience to each customer based on the personalization we want to achieve. Because personalization definitely increases customer loyalty. So let's go over to customer expectation and customer experience changes or advances. Well, customers expect to communicate with you or interact with you anytime, anywhere, on any channel that they decide to interact with you. It could be voice call. It could be email. More and more, it's either a, a SMS, a chat, or social media a tremendous amount of, of growth in social media channels has occurred over the past two or three years. And how are you going to be able to capitalize on that? And then personalization. Uh, I, in building this presentation, you know, we, we were looking at value-added personalization, but I came across a concept that I really love, and that's value-unique customer experiences. So knowing what you know about your customers, what can you do to build value unique customer experiences? And I think that's a really great conversation path to get in as we work together with our clients to define the desired outcomes the clients want to achieve based around the unique needs of their customers. And then outcomes. Outcome is a word that I think is very underutilized. What outcomes do, do your customers expect? And there's a, a, a ton of data around the wants and needs and desires of customers that are based on achieving specific outcomes. 
and those outcomes can be around uh, achieving a desired um, result. They could be around the ease in which the uh, the interaction happened. It could be around uh, you providing something unique that they didn't experience, that value unique uh, uh, thought, right? It's very broad field, but if you could perspective, uh, if you take the perspective of you can design from a blank sheet of paper, this is where your, your know-how, your experience can come into play along with the market research to get to that point where you are building these value unique customer experiences. So we go back down to customer experience advances here. And again, it gets down to uh, the tools give you the choice. Who how and when your customer wants to interact, that's, that's a big key. And when they're interacting, what are you doing to personalize that experience? Uh, one of the stats that I, I looked up uh, and uh, came across, I should say, 62% of your customers lose some amount of loyalty when you're not providing a personalized customer experience. That's a huge number. Right. They expect you to know things about them when you call, uh, when they call you. And they expect you to, to uh, interact with them in a very uh, humanized, personalized way when you have a live agent. And when you don't have a live agent, you're using a virtual agent or AI-based virtual agents. They expect you to, to uh, determine their identity and know what's going on with their business with you, with their account. And then, of course, outcomes. We talked about on the prior slide the agents having limited authority. The trend is to push more authority to the agents and the authority to help achieve those customer outcomes. And the, the factors that are there are, is it reasonable? Can they do it quickly? And can it be frictionlessly? I'm not sure frictionlessly is a word, but frictionless, right? The bar continues to rise or customer expectations. How are you positioned to, to meet or exceed those customer expectations? So let's get back to the team, the employees. So if every employee is considered a customer experience agent, who are some of the ones that we would highlight here? Well, you know, your traditional contact center agents and supervisors, of course, but a sales professional, uh, accounts receivable person, uh, somebody retail uh, in a, let's say you go to a home improvement store, a support technician that's coming over to your home to fix your cable or, or a, a repair technician to fix a, a washing machine or calling into uh, any government uh, um you know, organization, uh, call into city hall and try to get some city services. They don't, those are everyone who you're interacting with may or may not be in a formal contact center, but they are impacting the customer's perception of your organization or your government and how you enable and empower those people is changing today. How you consider doing it, how you consider enabling and empowering the people that are customer facing, you should consider reviewing and determining if you need to evolve and improve. So we have agents that are representatives of customer experience and we have virtual agents. So the term virtual agent is typically associated with uh, artificial intelligence based tools. And there are a ton of them on the market and over the past year, year and a half that chat GPT has made the, the headlines, we're seeing more and more companies and more and more products and services that are AI based. And how are you leveraging that? So when we go to uh, looking at those tools, what we want to do is leverage the tools because the definition of who your agents are has changed the tools they need and what you provide to each person, whether it's formal contact center functionality or it's the ability for each person to understand 
those unique value uh, offerings that you're building and for the everyone in your organization to understand what the goals are and the desired outcomes are for you when it comes to their role relative to the whole customer experience uh, strategy that you've put into place. So tools like Agent Assist, which leverage AI, when I'm on uh, an interaction, whether it's a voice or, or say a chat interaction with a contact center agent, we have tools now from numerous providers that while that uh, interaction is taking place, the Agent Assist is able to analyze sentiment. It's able to analyze uh, the, the words that are being said and deliver information and suggestions to the agent to improve that interaction. That's a unique value. That's a unique value add that uh, many companies are taking advantage of because of the, the, the ever-changing landscape of the products and services that you're offering. And training is harder and harder to, uh, to invest in, to take agents out of production. How can you make that agent smarter, real time, and in the context of the interaction you're having? You know, if you've ever watched the news, all of the uh, news anchors uh, have an earpiece in and the producers are feeding them information. So they're not expected to know everything and things happen during the broadcast. Well, agent assist is like that earpiece that says, hey, I, I see what's going on here. Think about this. Why don't you introduce this? It sounds like we, we should offer a 10% discount because they're not happy here uh, for a 10% discount coupon because we can't get to a resolution. Well, we can build that out for you and design that to meet the needs of those unique value interactions that you want to deliver. And, and sentiment analysis is another, is another uh, uh, big factor. And, and by the way, sentiment analysis is not just occurring in the contact center. So if you have customers who are talking to any of the employees in your company, we now have the ability without needing contact center licenses to turn on sentiment analysis for all phone calls or selected phone calls. And that's extremely valuable because that's, those are meaningful measurements that you can uh, analyze and make actionable decisions based on. And of course, digital uh, integration, digital transformation uh, and social media are big, big parts of what we're doing now. It's, it's hard to, to find any business that doesn't have some social media presence. How are you interacting with that social media presence to drive business, drive customer satisfaction, to differentiate, differentiate yourself in the marketplace? Very, very important. And even recordings and transcription. And that, those recordings and transcription tie into uh, AI-based tools, again, that tie back into things that will help you understand patterns and trends in these meaningful measurements. So what are some of the benefits to these tools, right? Well, the flexibility to design based on the outcomes you want to achieve to, to, to meet those customer or exceed those customer expectations. Again, what can you do that's unique? What can you do that's differentiating yourself from your competition, right? To surprise your customers, to delight them. And you have an abundance of information because we can integrate to other data sources that you have, whether it's your CRM or uh, uh, ERP or any other tools that you might have. It might be a, a practice management solution. It might be a dealer management solution. We can integrate to that to give the data that you have context. It's not just interactions, but it's interactions uh, relative to your customers. It's interactions relative to uh, this whole relationship that you have. And then share that information across the company. We find that uh, data and information is siloed uh, in many companies. You have a wealth of this information. How do, you, how do you analyze it? How do you share it? Well, that's stuff we can help you with. We, we do help people with. Uh, and then setting the expectations of what a meaningful, high value customer experience is with your people. And not just measuring it in the contact center, but then measuring it company-wide. 
And when you can do that, you can start to reward people for their contributions. And those rewards can be recognition-based, they can be uh, financial-based, but they should be visible to set an example for the behavior that you're rewarding inside your organization. But these will all help deliver that personalized customer experience. So I'm going to take a break here for a second. Uh, do we have any questions in the queue? We do not. All right. And, you know, Kurt uh, from Medic is on the call with us today. And Kurt and I have worked together for more years than I want to admit to. Uh, Kurt is our CX uh, solutions engineering expert. And he is front lines with, uh, with many of our customers. And we have... Uh, a very different philosophy about how we engage our solution engineers here. We are not just pre-sale. So Kurt is not there just to sell something. And we have a number of our uh, uh, solution engineers on the call. Uh, and they're all very talented, uh, led by Eric Koffenbaugh. Uh, we are there throughout your life, life cycle with us. We're there in how you uh, help us understand your business, how we design the solution, how we implement it. And as you grow and evolve, we're there to make sure you're maximizing your investment, getting a great ROI. And as the products evolve, as the feature sets evolve, as your business evolves, we're there to be your, your strategic consultants to make sure you can leverage what you're, what you're either subscribing to or that there are new things that you might want to subscribe to in addition to what you already have. So there's a ton of, as I said, there's a ton of uh, metrics out there on uh, self-service and automation, because we're going to start talking a little about the AI-based tools. Uh, I'm not going to read these, but you can see these are pretty big numbers for people that want things like immediacy or want to communicate in a different way. And those who put a high value on speed, convenience, and polite service as a baseline. So that's price of entry today. These are not necessarily differentiating your organization. These are the price of entry points that you need to consider as you grow and evolve. So the next part here is we talked about all of the different people who can be agents. Here are some of the virtual agent functionalities that are available to you and the benefits associated with that. So you think about people uh, and interacting with your customers, uh, a lot of that could be very repetitious and, and, and I use the word mundane questions that can be answered with self-service. For example, do you have a list of FAQs that you know uh, people call up about all the time that can be answered very, uh, very accurately uh, without needing a human intervention. Uh, we've built store locator services. We've built order status, uh, whether you want to place an order, check an order status, cancel an order. Uh, we can do appointment scheduling. That can be, you know, many people think about the appointment scheduling for doctors, but there are many industries that where appointment scheduling is uh, appropriate. For example, um, automobile uh, in uh, the world, right? Uh, you want to schedule a, a service appointment, right? Um, and by the way, those are customer-initiated self-service automation. You can do company-initiated outbound, right? Appointment reminders. Hey, you know, it's time for your, your initial service. It's time for your 30,000-mile service. Hey, it's time to schedule your annual uh, physical. And even things like the status of an order. Do you want to send that out via voice, a call, via an SMS? Maybe you want to send it out uh, via an email or a combination of them. All doable with the solutions that we have available today. And so not only does this type of functionality improve the customer experience, because we're removing the time element, there's, when you have these AI-based intelligent virtual agents, there's no waiting in queue. You're going to get serviced immediately. The, 
the customer can call or interact at any time. They're 24 hours. They don't get sick. They don't take breaks, right? This is very, very um, you know, useful to many, many businesses, especially when you look at the demographics of, of, uh, of your customers, where they're located, how they want to inter in interact with you, their busy schedules. Can you make it frictionless? Can you make it easy? But those benefits also translate to employee experience benefits. Think about being an agent in a contact center and answering the same questions over and over and over again. And you're being measured and you're, you're being either measured on time or you're measured on customer experience, but you can't get away from the fact that answering those questions that could be better served by self-service takes away from your ability to work on the higher value interactions and spend more time on those higher value interactions because you don't have to rush with all of these other calls that are uh, potentially uh, better self-serve questions. And it re reduces abandoned calls. We have lots of empirical data. I didn't want to make this too technical today, but when if you engage with us, to, uh, just uh, not to buy something, but to learn more about what we do, you'll see that we have a lot of empirical data. We have not only reports, but we have telemetry back. So the telemetry is more technical, and we can map that telemetry to show you the visual benefits of putting in self-service and its impact on abandoned calls, for example, compared to no self-service. And it's really interesting because what happens with an abandoned call, if it's a sales call, that customer might not call back. They might go somewhere else. So you've got problems there. And if it's a support call, they're going to call you back. So when they hang up, they're going to turn into another call and your reporting is not going to accurately, really accurately reflect that, but it's going to clog up the queues. So there are things that really impact um, your customer experience and employee experience. But when you do reduce these factors, it does allow you to guide your agents to investing additional time in these higher value interactions. And that allows you to be able to create and deliver those value unique interactions, right? You don't have to feel rushed as an agent on every call because you know there's a ton of calls in queue. So that will result in increased customer satisfaction. Uh, again, the empirical studies that are done around this are, are uh, or numerous, uh, it will increase the CSAT ratings that your customers give you. It will increase the ESAT ratings, your employee satisfaction ratings, because your your agents will be happier and, and uh, more fulfilled in their jobs working on higher value interactions. But when you expand this across the entire company and everybody understands your customer experience uh, uh, strategy and their role in delivering as an agent of your customer experience, uh, their, uh, their role and responsibilities, that translates as great expectation setting to increase or improve customer experiences. And then really you start to think about how you improve the time metrics measurements versus customer experience measurements balance. Are you able to focus that customer experience balance in a way that allows you to deliver these unique uh, interactions, these value unique interactions, and still be able to service all of the interactions? And the answer is with self-service, it, it doesn't make it easy, you know, it doesn't make it a guarantee, but it makes it possible through great thought design implementation uh, and evolving and refining, it makes it achievable. And it not only does it make it achievable, the ROI on self-service automa automation is usually measured in less than three months because you're reducing 
the cost per transaction to a virtual agent, which is much less expensive than a live agent. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground. And I, I found this statement online and I really wanted to share it, right? Customer experience isn't about telling people how awesome you are. It's about creating value unique experiences that surprise and delight your customers. And what comes out of that is you can leverage the stories that you, you uncover to build upon that foundation because people love stories and social media is a great way to share stories with, with uh, your existing customers to your customer base and to attract new customers. And it's a great way to motivate your people internally to see the impact of the efforts that they've had in a customer experience focus. So this link in the, uh, in the, um, uh, presentation here, which we'll share with everyone, has 10 great customer experience uh, stories, right? Um, I found them all to be very useful, lots of great ideas. And if you just go online and search for, for uh, unique customer experience stories, value unique stories, you'll find a ton of them and give you a different perspective on how you might be uh, able to grow and evolve uh, how you um, Think about your customer experiences. All right, we're getting almost near the end here. So something I'd like you to think differently about. I say the same is different, right? The same is different. What does that mean? Well, today we want you to think differently, not just about buying a product anymore, but how are you going to look at the tools that you need when you're making your evaluation and decisions. So subscribe, that's what you're going to, most people stop at the subscribe. And then after they say, yes, let's do it. And they have a price quote uh, and they sign a contract, then they get engaged with the implementation or pro services teams. And at that point they learn, oh my goodness, there's, you know, this is not what we thought, or, oh, this is great. But if you don't think about that and make that part of how you make your decision, you are probably going to be a little surprised. And then what are we going to measure? What are you going to measure? So you know what you're doing is successful. And that measurement can be ROI, it can be total cost of ownership, it could be the adoption rate of the tools that are being provided, it could be CSAT improvements because we're putting uh, new seat customer experience uh, uh, value unique uh, um, workflows in place, it can be anything. And then how are you going to evolve as an organization as the tools that you have available to you from your subscription? And the services that you have available to you from a strategic partner, such as vertical communications, evolve. And take that all into account because it's not about selling you something. It's about becoming your strategic partner who can consult with you on how you're going to grow and evolve your business and the customer experiences you want to deliver. So that's why I say, Consider thinking differently about this. It's about the, the customer experience tools and the product experience that a partner like Vertical Communications has. The solutions to us are pretty, we're pretty agnostic to the solutions. We want to work with every customer to identify what their desired outcomes are, what their business drivers are, to understand your business and put all that in place and give you that consultative a strategic partner value, right? That unique value that we offer that says we're in this together and we'll help you grow and evolve. So with that, that is the end of our presentation. 